Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where this week I want to finish another structure for the ON30 Thunder Mesa Mining Company layout. I'm back over here by the little mining town of Rainbow Ridge, which is my recreation of the town of the same name, which existed at Disneyland uh, on the old mine train through Nature's Wonderland attraction. This is where you would get on the train, was in the little mining town of Rainbow Ridge. And slowly but surely, I've been replacing the cardboard mock-ups over here with finished structures. Most recently, I finished uh, Pat Casey's Last Chance Saloon, and the one I want to do today is the General Store. It's been a long time since I've done an adobe structure, so it's time to jump into one again. Built this little mock-up several years ago. Let's see if I can just pop it off of here. There we go. By the way, if you happen to be at Disneyland and you're in line for the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, you can still see this building. It's one of the few that survived from the old mine train through Nature's Wonderland attraction. It's the first structure uh, of the little town on the right hand side as you're going through the queue. Just look up and there it is. So I took my uh, basically an illustration that I created to make this mock-up and translated that into uh, cuttable files, basically a plan in Adobe Illustrator. And I did a whole video on uh, how to design structures in Adobe Illustrator. And you can check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, I decided to make the walls out of some MDF, and this stuff is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. So in O scale, that's going to translate to uh, 9 inch thick walls, which gives you that nice chunky look that you want uh, on an Adobe structure. And as you can see, um, this is going to be a shallow relief structure, which is true of all the structures over in uh, Rainbow Ridge. Get this other side wall on here. And then the back wall. And wrap this with a couple of rubber bands until that glue sets up. And while I wait for those walls to dry, I guess I can go ahead and assemble the doors and windows. I made these out of some um, 25 one thousandths of an inch thick brown laser board. And, you know, it's just the usual stacked construction, layered construction, so you get a 3D look. This is all one unit. It's double doors, but I designed it as one unit that will drop right in there. And then the same thing with these big front windows. There's just an outer frame that uh, glues right to the top of the inner casement. And this little piece makes up the bottom of the window sill. And then the top of the window sill should just fit right in there. Like that. And then to finish off this door frame, I'm gluing in some O-scale 2x4. I also cut a floor for the building out of some uh, 1 16th of an inch thick basswood plywood. I'll go ahead and give that a coat of stain now. All right, glue is dry on this now. We'll see how we did. It's not bad. There's some inevitable gaps here with the, uh, the tabs and slots. And that's because when the laser cuts, it doesn't cut at a precise 90 degree angle. It, it actually it cuts in kind of an hourglass shape and it becomes more evident the thicker the material you use. So you're gonna have some gaps like that. But we've got some good old Elmer's wood putty. Just go over all of the joints. Okay, let that stuff dry and then it's time to do some sanding. I not only want to take this uh, 
this filler putty down, but I also want to round all of the corners. And that's what really gives it an adobe look, is those rounded corners. So I'll be working on that for a little while. I suppose I could go and do this on the belt sander, but I um, kind of enjoy doing it by hand. As I go, you can see I'm just kind of rolling it, rolling the sanding block over the edge to round that corner off. Now that I've got the corners looking pretty good, the way I want them, I'm going to go and do the roof line and around the doors and windows. Those should all have rounded edges to really give it that adobe look. Get the back sides too. So I'm going to be sanding for a little while. And I'm just using a damp paper towel to clean the sawdust off. Now I want to add a stucco texture to this MDF. I could paint it just like this and you might be able to get away with it uh, for um, Adobe, but um, you really want to have something on there to create a stucco texture. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> scale stucco from Crescent Creek Bottles is no longer available. However, there is an excellent thing you can use, which is just some acrylic modeling paste. An artist's acrylic modeling paste. It's an artist's acrylic medium. It's for mixing with paints to give them more, uh, more body, more thickness, the acrylic paints. And it works excellent as a, as a, uh, as a uh, texturing material for stucco. And I'm just going to... You don't need to get a jar this big, by the way. <laughs> this is a huge jar. I would recommend getting one of the, the tubes, the smaller tubes or smaller jars than this. You're, you're never going to go through that much. And now I just want to take and stipple it on. This is a semi-stiff brush. Notice how I'm not putting it on too thick. I want to be able to see those walls. I want to be able to see that MDF uh, through the, uh, the modeling paste. If you can't see the walls through there, you're putting it on too thick. I'm also staying out of the, uh, the door and window openings as, as best I can. Uh, so that those laser cut parts will still fit when the time comes. And don't forget the back, too. This is also going to show, at least part of this wall is going to show. Before that has a chance to dry in there, I want to take a toothpick and get the uh, modeling paste out of the lodgepole holes. These are cut for a uh, one-eighth inch dowel. I want to make sure they still fit. Same thing around the doors and windows. I am going to go ahead and put on a second coat. I want a little bit more texture. And once that modeling paste is completely dry, I just want to go over it really lightly with some 400 grit sandpaper. Take that texture down just a little bit. And if you're modeling in smaller scales, like say HO, you want to do this even more. The other thing is, is you want the texture to be kind of rounded on the top and not, you know, spiky, which is what you tend to get when you stipple with a brush. And the sandpaper takes that spikiness off the top and rounds it off and makes it uh, uh, softer, I guess would be the word. I'm just going to use some inexpensive uh, craft paints to color this. I'm going to go about 50-50 with some Apple Barrel Sun-Kissed Peach and some Apple Barrel Light Mocha. Mix those two together. That gives us a nice adobe color. Yeah, that looks about right. Maybe a little bit more of the peach. You want it to be a little pink, but not like pink. You know what I mean? <laughs> just a just a hint of more peach than pink. So that's a good color. And when all is said and done, 
That's something that looks kind of like that. As you can see on the mock up here, uh, the building has two different kinds of signs. It has you know one that's on the on the front awning here, and it also has signs that are painted on the building. And um, the best way to do that for something like this, I found, is with a stencil. So I laser cut a stencil. It doesn't say Rainbow Ridge up here. Of course, on the prototype, it didn't say Rainbow Ridge there either. It was actually just blank. <laughs> but I decided it needed something up there, so I put uh, the build date, 1860. And this is a very delicate stencil. Uh, I've coated it the back with some uh, Super 77. And it should just line up right there. And now I need to spray some color on here. And I think I'm going to use it. I could mix something up for the airbrush, but I have this almost exact color in a rattle can, this kind of pale blue. So I'm going to use that. But first, I need to mask off the rest of the building. And the color I'm going to use is this uh, Rust Oleum Coastal Blue. This isn't quite dry yet, but I'm going to go ahead and peel it off because I don't want the, the adhesives on here any longer than they absolutely have to be. Mm, boy, I think we did okay. First, I'll touch up around this with the wall color. I'm just getting rid of any overspray, just cleaning up the edges a little bit with a double zero brush. Now I've sprayed some of that blue into a container and I can use that to eliminate these uh, telltale stencil lines. I had to pick a date that was all sixes and eights and zeros. <laughs> Those of you who work with stencils know that some letters and numbers are easier to work with than others. Eights and zeros and sixes are tough ones, but I chose 1860 um, because it's kind of a little Easter egg. 1960 is when the mine train ride at Disneyland was um, updated to be the mine train through nature's wonderland, which is the version that most people remember. That's the one that had Cascade Peak and the beaver valley and the bears scratching themselves on the trees and all that stuff. All right, I'm going to call that good enough. For the doors and windows, I, uh, I painted them a uh, red oxide. And I'm just dry brushing on uh, some different uh, tan, a little tan and dark brown just to give them the look of weathered wood. Now to bring out the detail a little more, I'm just going to go over them with a dark wash. This is some uh, black and burnt umber mixed together with a whole lot of water. And even though the Rainbow Ridge structures weren't really weathered, you know, it was supposed to be a boom town, so everything was was very new looking. Um, I'm kind of leaning more towards the appearance of this structure today uh, on Big Thunder. And that's mostly because um, <laughs> that's what I have most of the reference photos of. Now I can go ahead and glaze these windows. I've got some uh, clear acetate cut to size. I'll just pop that in here with some Zap Canopy Glue. This is Zap Canopy Glue. If you haven't used this stuff, it's great. Specifically, I use it specifically for glaze and windows. And the prototype doors have uh, a pair of metal handles rather than doorknobs. So I'm going to try and simulate that with some wire. I've been a couple of small pieces of music wire. Put those in the holes. We'll dab a CA on the back. Should hold it in place. I'm 
Now I can paint these with a little bit of uh, Vallejo black metallic. And the prototype also has blinds in the window, so I'm going to simulate those with some manila file folder paper. And we'll do the same thing for the windows. Another thing I want to add before I put the doors and windows in are the wood lintels that go up above. You know, those beams above the doors and windows that are so um, evocative of this sort of uh, western territorial architecture. So I'm just cutting those out of some 6x6. Six six. I want these to be kind of a weathered gray. So I'll use my my India ink and rubbing alcohol stain. Let those dry for a minute or two. And it shouldn't take too much glue to hold these in. This would be a pretty good press fit. Now with the doors and windows, I should just be able to come in from behind, like this. I want all of these to be glued in flush with the interior wall, so you've got that deep set look you get with Adobe Buildings on the doors and windows. Now I need to cut and stain the lodge poles. I'll go in these holes up here. So those are six inch diameter holes at scale. So I've got some eight, one eighth of an inch uh, in diameter uh, dowel. Before I cut them out, I want to distress the dowel a little bit with a razor saw. Now I'm going to just use my hobby knife to give them kind of a rough hewn look. And yeah, we'll get some stain on those. Yeah, just a little dab of wood glue on the ends. I should be able to just push them into the holes. Okay. So far so good. My apologies for the sudden change in the audio. My lav mic stopped working uh, while filming this sequence, so we're going to have to do some voiceover here. I laser cut parts for the awning out of some 1 16th of an inch thick MDF, and then assembled those with yellow glue. And that assembly was then glued to a roof made from some 1 32nd of an inch thick chipboard. And then the remaining rafters were glued in, and the entire assembly was painted dark brown. While waiting for that paint to dry, I went ahead and glued in the 1 16th of an inch thick basswood plywood floor, and then stained the 1 by 8 boards that would be used for the board on board roofing for the awning. I also decided to add uh, more weathering to the adobe walls at this time with a watercolor wash of burnt sienna and cobalt blue. This uh, brought the look a little bit more in line with the way the structure looks today above the queue for Big Thunder Mountain. The awning assembly was weathered with some tan and gray dry brushed acrylics. And then the board on board roofing was applied, with each board overlapping the previous one by about two scale inches. I chose this style of roofing because it's what I observed on the prototype at Disneyland. And then the finished awning was glued to the building, using a very fine pencil line as a guide. And then I turned my attention to the 5 foot deep front porch, building up the base with some O-scale 4x8s. And then finishing the assembly up with some decking made from 1x12s. This structure is up near the backdrop, so 
really doesn't make a lot of sense to model a full interior for it, even though you'll be able to, you know, look in the windows. Um, so I'm using a bit of uh, theatricality <laughs> here, and I'm doing what's basically a, a painted backdrop for the interior. And it's going to look like uh, wooden shelves stocked with goods. Got a piece of uh, illustration board. Right now I'm just coloring it with my Minwax marker, going over it twice in some spots to give the look of shadows under the shelves. I, I drew kind of a grid pattern on here to represent shelves. Now I'll use my black fine tip markers to accentuate these shelves a little bit. Add a little bit more depth to the shadows. And now I'm just going to use a small brush and some acrylic colors to populate these shelves with products. And those are basically just going to be shapes and dabs of color. That's really all you've got to do. Now maybe these are some cans back here. Just make some can shapes. Maybe these are sacks of sugar back here. Vary the shapes. Still gonna do some. Maybe there's just some dishes up here. We'll do some circles. Now I'm gonna come back with some dark brown and add some shadows. Now I just want to come back and indicate, you know, some labels on things and good colors for that or red, yellow, white, you know, good old advertising colors. And now I think I can just glue these in to the interior of the structure. There we go. So for lighting, I want it to be a little dim. So I'm just going to use a single three millimeter yellow LED come in through this hole in the back of the wall here and that's what that's for. And right now I'm just uh, using an emery board on the lamp so it'll diffuse the light. And I like to use some black gaffers tape for this. First I wound it around the LED itself to make it uh, thicker so it'll fit in that hole better. And I'm just going to hold it in place on the back of the building. That's the advantage of uh, these being up against the backdrop. Nobody sees the backs of these buildings. So I can, you know, let some of the, <laughs> let some of the magic show, I guess. There you can see what that looks like in there. The roof itself is going to be out of some um, 1 32nd of an inch thick chipboard. But I want to support it here on the corners. I'm putting in some uh, 4x8 beams. Now I can glue this roof on. Just slide it right under that chimney. To simulate rolled roofing, I'm going to use gaffer tape for that too. Just stuck a piece down to my, my cutting mat and I'm going to cut some three foot wide strips that I can use. Overlap that by about a scale foot or so. Now I can do some weathering with chalks up on the roof. Just using some gray and white a little bit of brown thrown in there to warm it up. Now get some uh, matte fix on that so the chalk won't go anywhere. Now I want to add a topper to this this little adobe chimney and I want it to look like it's made out of terracotta. But I'm going to use a piece of straw from a juice box and just going to heat the end just enough 
so it curls over. So I put a little lip on there. So now I'm going to do something kind of scary. <laughs> I'm going to drill a hole down through my chimney. Remember, this is MDF under there. Now I've got a little piece of aluminum rod. I'm going to pot that in there with some uh, cyanoacrylate. Should be able to just push this down right on top. Now we'll get a little chalk weathering on that, mostly black for soot. Bring that right down the side of the wall. And here's how that painted background looks with light on inside. Well, I am very pleased with this uh, building so far. The only thing left to do now really is to detail the front porch and Boy, do I have some details for that. The first layer of detail are some signs. And a lot of these are actually taken from photos of the front of this building as it exists today above the big thunder queue. And I just, uh, you know, straightened them out in Photoshop and sharpened them up a little bit. Just got done gluing those into place. These are just printed on some regular inkjet photo paper um, at the highest quality photo setting that your printer can do. Since I'm uh, basically doing a, a hybrid version of this building that's somewhere between the Nature's Wonderland version and the Big Thunder version, I'm including details from both, including this arched sign, which goes on the front of the awning right here, it says plain and fancy dry goods. That's a detail I really liked from the original Nature's Wonderland version. And once again, that's just some printed paper. I uh, laminated it to some Bristol board to give it a little bit more body and thickness. Painted the back and the edges to make it look like wood and just gluing it into place. Now we've got some crates up here on the on the front porch, and I uh, printed out labels for them from a photo of the front of the building. I'll show you how I make these quick and dirty crates. These are just two pieces of uh, six by twelve glued together. Now the reason I'm using uh, six by twelves to create a twelve uh, inch square crate is because then you get the seam right here. You get it looks like individual boards on the sides. And you can leave them just plain like this for fresh crates. This one looks kind of dark, so I'm going to stain it. And I just cut out my label, glue it onto the end, and go around and stain the edge of that paper with my watercolors there. Stack of crates. This looks like a good spot or a metal wash tub. That's just a white metal casting and I didn't paint it, uh, but I did put a dark wash on it to bring out the, the details. We've got some various casks and barrels. These particular barrels are some castings from Bar Mills, I believe. They're just painted up. There's a little coal bucket. Those always make nice details. I think this one's from uh, Wiseman. A few tools are always good details to add. Got to have some picks and shovels in a mining town, right? I got to have one of those blue enamel coffee pots, right? Got to have a couple of lanterns. These are from Wiseman Model Services also. Nice little white metal castings. Another detail from the original I wanted to include is a hitching rail. So I made this up with some uh, scale 6x6 six six and uh, eighth inch round for the top, a couple of nut bolt washer castings, and now just glue it in the front just like so. And the final detail is a wooden Indian. And of course this fellow is not a detail that was on 
either the Nature's Wonderland version or the Big Thunder version of this structure, but he is from Disneyland. This is the wooden Indian that stands out in front of the Westward Ho Trading Company, and also he's on Main Street, exact same sculpt, sometimes known as Jimberly. <laughs> for those in the know. Uh, and this was a gift he was given to me. He's a 3D print uh, at scale of the actual Wooden Indian from Disneyland. It was given to me by a friend, and I'm sorry they're not commercially available, but I thought this is the absolute perfect place for him. So, and with all of that detailing done, I can install this over on the layout in the little mining town of Rainbow Ridge. Just need to run the wires back here behind the bench work. Now obviously I've got some more groundwork to do here to blend all these structures in, but so far I am very pleased with the way my version of Rainbow Ridge is shaping up. All right, got the wires hooked up to the Rainbow Ridge uh, lighting bus, and now we can turn it on and see how it looks. Thank you all for watching today and following along with the build of the Rainbow Ridge General Store. I had a blast doing this and I hope you got a lot out of it too. If you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share, and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more. And you can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.